Hmm. Nah, man. If if uh if XRP actually took over all the global payments, which is like not possible, it would actually be changed. But since like that's basically fairy tale land, it's not gonna happen. I mean, like it it would like for XRP to change price based on utility it would take a massive, massive amount of volume. That's not something they can achieve. Especially since, like, they don't really have any adoption right now. And, like, most of the, most of the cross-border adoption is going to go to stablecoins anyways. Which is exactly why they made a stablecoin in the first place. Lava, he needs to tell Charles to use and stop being stupid. Dude, Charles can't take that kind of hit to his ego. He, he like, he wants to do things his way. I mean, I just want Voltaire to... I, I, they, they need to get the voting system in. They realistically need to get the voting system in. So they can just kind of like vote down Charles' ideas and like go with their own ideas. I mean, like, I don't think like people understand like for, for the kind of adoption to actually affect price outside of FOMO, like how much that takes. Like, really, like, how much that takes, like, how much adoption it takes. That, like, I don't think any kind of industrial utility, like, realistically will push port coin prices up within the next 5, 10 years, if not longer. So... So like if they haven't gotten any international adoption now, they're not going to get inter they're not really going to get the international adoption in the next 5 10 years, especially since it's moving towards the stablecoin category, which is once again like part of the reason they made the stablecoin. They obviously aren't going to come out and say it cuz they have like too many people like hinging on XRP taking over the uh, entire payment space. But yeah. I I really wouldn't I, I don't know how much I would look into the partnership with Huawei. I'm not, but I mean, I don't think Cardano's dead, but it still does need USDC. It definitely still does need USDC. Like, that's pretty much obvious. Charles is just being obstinate because he wants to do things his way. I don't really care about him doing his things his way. For him, it might just be an, for him, it just might be an experiment and his philosophical nonsense. But realistically, I don't really care about that. Because of simple supply and demand, enterprise utility is nowhere near the level of traffic to push prices. Uh, TL moves prices. I, I mean, if you can, if you could take over like trillions upon trillions of dollars in volume of payment, yeah, you could actually like you could technically like push up prices. But since that's never going to happen, it doesn't really matter. Once Voltaire arrives this quarter. Nobody would send a Wells notice to. It's not even that the foundation doesn't even control Cardano right now. There's too many nodes and there's too many nodes. I think the SEC is testing the waters with Uniswap to see what happens. Cause like they've they're pretty much done. They're, they're they pretty much like sued every centralized exchange they can. They're gonna see like how much they can do to decentralize exchanges, but that's not gonna work because they're not gonna succeed. I think Voltaire's next. I think Voltaire's Q3 or Q4. My guess is Voltaire is actually Q4, but it could be Q3. Once they get at, once they get that in, they need to put up. They need to put up votes. They like they they really need to put up votes. Simple. Uh, like. Uh, they they say like things are actually determined by the community. That actually needs to be the case, and the community needs to stop listening to Charles, basically, especially if he doesn't want USDC to get in. Five hundred TPS of simple transactions won't move. I think you're. De I think he's depending on like the 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 coin burn thing to actually uh, to, to actually affect um, Hedera. I highly doubt you'll get anywhere near five hundred thousand TPS. Is Coinbase going to list Pepe? They're going to do Pepe Futures, though. I, I don't know if they're going to do Pepe, but they're going to do Pepe Futures. So, like, Coinbase is, like, going all in on this meme thing. Obviously, they're, like, working with the parts outside the United States first because the U.S. has more regulations. But it seems like Coinbase is fully embracing the crypto meme mania. 
Well, no, Big E32, they're just suing the biggest players in the game. They're not, look, Coinbase, look, the SEC is not interested in going after Small Fry. That doesn't get the SEC any fame, and that doesn't achieve Gary Ginzer's purpose. Also, there's too many damn projects for them to go around and sue. So they're just going after, like, they're, they're, they're just going after the big projects to try to instill fear in other projects. But that's not really working since they're not winning these lawsuits. I mean, Pepe's only up like 5% today, but that's better than most other cryptos. Remember, Coinbase, like Coinbase just a while ago basically said they were going to do Doge futures. Now they're doing like Pepe futures. They're going full in on the, they're definitely going full in on the meme thing, cashing out of it. Well, I mean, it's a tactic of like, it's basically a tactic of like, you know, targeting the biggest guy so everyone else falls in line. So like in their view, everything's a security. And the easiest way to prove that is by going after the exchanges and shutting them down. If they can shut, if they can control and shut down the market, everything comes under like governmental control. And in that way, like, you know, like no one's, uh, no one's allowed to money launder or tax evade that way. I mean, that's why they're like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a two pronged attack from the government, like from the feds and the SEC themselves. The SEC is trying to make everything securities. But like the government, like the other parts of the government are trying to make everything KYC AML. Now, I don't mind like all the centralized exchanges being KYC AML. I have no problem with that. But like the, the whole like the the, la- the the attacks the SECs are launch the SEC launching is ridiculous. Yeah, they they're like they're not going to go around and sue every single individual project. That's they don't like they don't have the manpower for that. And and like they they're not going to have the patience for that either. I mean, like, yeah, but uh, look, they're they're use, they're gonna use like FTX as an excuse, though. Like, no one's actually complaining about the exchanges, but it doesn't really matter what people complain about to the SEC. They just want like they basically just want overarching control, because with overarching control, they can basically do whatever the hell they want. I think the government just sh- I think the government should just settle with full KYC for like the exchanges. For, for the, for the, I think the government should definitely just settle for K, full KYC for like the, um, for the, yeah, for the exchanges. And then that's it. Like they shouldn't try to go after anything else. I, I really think it's like elements within the government, like Elizabeth Warren, Brad Sherman, and a couple of others that are like trying to make the SEC go after other things. Uniswap you know, will have to pay a fine for its pre-mine, I'm thinking. Yeah, also, like, Uniswap does actually have a coin, so they might be going after that. Well, I mean, like, they are using tax dollars, Big E32, but the thinking is, if they win these, but think about it, if they win these lawsuits, they can just extract that money back from the companies. That's kind of what they're going after, too. Remember, like, they're trying to find Ripple for, like, $2 billion. If they get the $2 billion, that easily covers for all the legal costs. So, like, the SEC is determining on winning these cases. The SEC is like the, the SEC is like determined to win these cases because they if they don't win these cases then they're just losing a lot of money. Like the LBRY thing, they won the LBRY case, but they only got a couple hundred thousand dollars because LBRY didn't really have any money to pay the SEC. So like they're actually losing out. Uh, uh, they're actually losing out a lot of money on these cases because they haven't won a big one. Like because they don't like. Because they haven't, they they haven't actually won a big case. Well, yeah, but like Big E32, like they're like they're going after they're they're going after Ripple now to, for two billion dollars because they sold to institutional investors. Now I don't really know if Uniswap sold to any institutional investors. I don't really know what's going on there, and I'm not really sure if Uniswap actually sold anything in the United States. I mean that that's a that that's going to be definitely even if they even if they get a lot of money from Ripple, that's very questionable. Because obviously, like, I'm not exactly sure who bought the uni tokens or like if they were directly bought or anything. So that's kind of a big question right there. So and I'm not really sure how the SEC is really going to resolve that. So it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely like an interesting it's definitely an interesting question to bring up, though. Either way, I don't even think they're going to win the Uniswap case. I like I really don't see how they win. I honestly don't really see how they win the Uniswap case. Cause like in the in the class action against Coin Coinbase, 
um, that just in the class action against Coinbase that resolve, like the, the courts essentially said that Coinbase secondary sales weren't security. So I'm not really sure how they're going to get around that one because that's going to be that is going to be very hard for them to get around. And I don't know if the SEC can achieve a different result. It, they are, um, look, they, they definitely are trying to get the $2 billion, but it's pretty, but it's common to ask for outrageous sums and then get a, get a small part of that sum. They're settled for a much... Yeah, they're definitely going to settle for a much lower amount. Well, like Ripple, look, no, like XRP didn't have an ICO though. The, like they're suing them for their institutional sales. But like you, like Uniswap also had like distributions and stuff like that. Like Uniswap might have also made sales as well. I, I I'm not surprised if Uniswap has to pay. But, like, who actually has the money, though, is the thing. Like, who has the money for Uniswap? For for XRP, you can go to the Ripple. Um, for XRP, you can go to the, the Ripple company. But for Uniswap, who exactly are you going to go to? I, do they have, like, a, do they have some kind of organization that has all their money in their treasury? Because if they do, they can just sue those people. Like, they might have to pay a fine, but I don't think the fine's going to be that large. And if they determine that sales to retail investors aren't securities, then the SEC's whole case might just get blown apart. So, like, the SEC is taking a big risk at this. The SEC is also taking a really big risk to sue them. But I think at this point, the SEC is basically out of ideas. Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, right now, the SEC is more or less out of ideas. Because the lawsuits just going, aren't going very well for them right now. And they're like they're basically trying a scatter shot to see if they can hit anything. And uh, it doesn't look like it's actually working for them. <clears throat> if they lose, if they end up losing a lot of these lawsuits, like I think Ginsler's pretty much done. And like the SEC's like the SEC's authority in crypto will be crippled. Was airdropped. VCs bought in the presale, like most crypt. Yeah, I think they can get the. I think they can get them on the presales. I definitely think they can get them in on the pre-sales. But how much is a big question. And like if it gets determined twice that secondary markets aren't securities and the SEC's lost the main part of their case. They could try to appeal. But they could try to appeal, but like they're already they're already looking at appealing the Ripple case and all these cases go all these cases will go together more or less. So I don't feel like they have a good way out of this. Um I think they're, I personally think they're just setting themselves up for a lot more losses, but that's just my opinion. And I think Gary, I think Gensler's uh, stint at the SEC is going to be looked at as a colossal failure, especially when it comes to crypto. Just Vetho generated in some way, discussed in their latest Twitter space. Yeah, they could generate more Vetho. I mean, that would bring up the ROI for staking, um, depending on, like, VTHO price. They could they could really just, like, double the VTHO generation or something like that. That would probably bring down the price of VTHO, though, because, like, you'd all, you all of a sudden have more supply. I, I, look, I, I think VeChain's strategy is to never have VTHO be a rare commodity. And because of that, I, I, I like, and because of that, I don't think, like, you can really look at... Uh, tokenomics for VeChain to try to bring the price up. The SEC knows they've lost the security narrative, so they're going for a cash grab from every crypto project they can. Yeah, but it's also going to take a long time. And also, like, these lawsuits are expensive for them. If they can't get, like, their... Like, if they can't actually get their money back out, like, then they're just kind of losing money. I mean, Gary's not doing... Gary's not doing very well on the job. He has some, he has like funding and he's, he has funding and backing, but he's losing the lawsuits. The, the fact, like, he's not, I don't think he's actually going to get fired, but he's going to be remembered as a failure as SEC head. Founder of uh, Wall Street, remember the last Forbes article criticizing ADA, the a new gauge, uh, may that affect new, I don't know if Wall Street was investing in Cardano anyways. I mean, 
uh, Charles has like a lot of issues. I think eventually they do need to like replace him as a leader of Cardano. Yeah, like that's why they target the big boys. They're not going to target like a they're not going to target small projects. The small projects don't have any money to pay them anyways. And since the small projects don't have any money since the small projects don't have any money to pay them, it's not worth the SEC going after them because they can't keep their agency funded. Right now it's a bunch of money grabs, but I don't think the money grabs are actually going to work all that well. Because they have to get at least $200 million back from Ripple to actually make up for their legal costs. And yeah, while that's only 10% of what they're asking for, like, look at what happened to LBRY. They got, like, 1%. And like I said, the courts aren't in favor of the SEC right now. They're, like, they're continuously ruling against them. So I don't think the judgment, I don't think the judgment the SEC gets will be nearly what they ask for. They're asking for a, they're asking for a colossal amount. Now, in Ripple's case... There is some in Ripple's case. There is some justification for that because they've been they've been selling the coin for years to institutions, and they've sold a lot to institutions. And if those sales are securities, and they would actually have to pay a lot. I don't really know what it is for Uniswap's case, and I don't know if ADA made any like sales to like American institutions. So like, in QNT, they her biggest bags are giving me XRP vibes. Yeah, I mean you might want to trade some of them definitely. Like, and they're just hoping that one of these cases wins so they can actually take it to the court and say like, hey, we won this case. They have to be securities. But it does not look like that's happening right now. And like each individual case is different. Like how much did, like how much primary market sales did each individual project do? And it's also going to be really hard since they're not going after Ethereum yet. And like, it looks like they're, they're taking like every single step possible to avoid going after Ethereum. That's going to make their case even harder because like, I'm sure at some point in the case, these companies are like, Hey, Ethereum sold a lot of ICOs. How come you're not going after them? What's the logic there? And they're not going to be able to answer that because like they don't, that they really don't want to go after Ethereum. Ondo? I still think Ondo is overvalued, honestly. Like, I, I I think, like, it's a decent project, but I think they did ride the BlackRock narrative a little too far. And right now, as far as I see, Black, BlackRock has their own plans, and they're not really using Ondo to tokenize things. I'm sure Ondo has a couple of contracts of their own, but I think, like, the, the BlackRock narrative was played too much with Ondo. It is part of the whole RWA thing, so it probably will do well, but I would still I would still invest in, like, smaller RWA projects. Because, like, we were talking about Ondo a lot in the last couple of months because we all thought they were, like, we, we all thought, like, BlackRock, they were, like, BlackRock's RWA play. But BlackRock seems to have their own plans with other stuff, and they're not exactly using Ondo for everything. I think people, I think people got enamored with Ondo because of the, the BlackRock thing because that's how their name, like, got so resounding. But there's a lot of there's a lot of players in the RWA field, and Ondo's like one of the bigger coins out there right now. That's actually doing this. So yeah, Coinbase. What do you guys think about Pepe Futures, man? Pepe Futures. Now they're gonna do this. They're they're going to do this in their non-US holdings first for Pepe Futures, but they're eventually wanting to bring Meme Futures to all of Coinbase. Obviously, there's a reason that Coinbase wants to do this. There's obviously a, a reason Coinbase actually wants to do this because obviously like the meme coins get a lot of traction and they got to get a lot of traffic and they get a lot of fees. So it obviously benefits Coinbase to have futures uh, because a lot of people are go like a lot of people want to leverage trade meme coins as dumb as that sounds. There's like a huge market for leverage trading meme coins. And since futures are inherently leveraged, there's going to be people that want to like play that in uh, Coinbase. And I think that's going to generate a lot of volume. But also like I think this will actually make Coinbase more uh, willing to list um, memes in the future. I know a lot of you probably don't like that, but Coinbase, but, uh, Coinbase will definitely list memes in the more memes in the future. It does make me a lot more bullish on Coinbase stock because as long as Coinbase can generate the fees, they're going to do extremely well. 
They're, they're definitely going to do extremely well as long as Coinbase can generate the fees, which I think they can do pretty well. Uh, so like Coinbase stock, like I've said, is definitely heading towards an all-time high. And I'm not really sure how high it's going to go. Like Coinbase, the value of the Coinbase company could like rise to hundreds of billions of dollars. Because remember, they're literally like, they're the biggest exchange in the United States and they will be like, and they will be the most dominant one. Yeah, uh, caps lock memes are always going to be a big part of crypto. Crypto is literally made for markets like memes. Like, I mean, like, especially if the SEC loses a lot of jurisdiction and the government only goes for KYC AML of centralized exchanges, memes are going to flourish. Yeah, you're going to be waiting a long time because memes aren't going to die. I haven't looked at the Todd network. I mean, it's, it's, it's rising really fast now. Like, Ton's actually rising really fast. It's going to flip Doge soon. So, it might be worth looking at. Ton's Telegram coin. So, I mean, like, the, I'm just afraid that Ton's pump is completely made by the whales that are, like, behind Telegram. Like, like look, memes are, like, memes are not going to die on uh, crypto. Because crypto is, like, a market that's made for memes. If you don't want crap like memes, go to the stock market. Because you're talking about a, an industry that with like no barriers to entry where anyone can make a crap project. It is, it is, it is tailor-made for stuff like memes. And you're also talking about an industry where most of the participants don't want heavy regulations. So there's no, like with, like with the kind of market that they're tr like we're trying to build with crypto, you're always going to have tons of memes. They'll just take uh, turns going from L1 network to network. More or less, I, I think like there's going to be a couple of networks that, they're per, that they permeate around. And those networks are actually going to be the ones that are successful. Yes, I did hear about Uniswap. We've been talking about it for the last day or so because the SEC did uh, issue them a Wells notice. Now, a Wells notice does not mean the SEC is suing you right now. It just means the SEC might in a little bit, which means you're eventually going to get sued. But generally, like you're, you're not being sued yet. So Uniswap is basically uh, Uniswap is basically bracing for a fight, and they should. There's no reason they should just give in and not fight, unless the fine the SEC wants is like really really small, because the SEC is not in a very good the, the SEC is not actually in a very good position uh, to force anyone on anything right now. Memes don't completely drown out regular alts. No meme co meme coins won't completely drown out regular alts, but they will take up a large part of the market. And I don't really know, like, I think only part of that, I think only part of that market's really crossover. I, I think, like, some of the meme players, like, if memes didn't exist, they probably just wouldn't invest in crypto at all. So I actually don't, I actually don't mind memes nearly as much as some other people. I think memes are fine for crypto. It was an, it was basically an inevitable part of the market. It was basically, like, a really inevitable part of the market that was going to come sooner or later anyways. Because because of the uh, because of the kinds of investors that crypto tends to attract, like meme coins are always going to be popular, especially like since you can build like especially since the prevalence of networks were fees, especially in prevalence of networks where fees are very low, and like um, it, transactions were very fast. Like Ethereum, like e Ethereum was basically like a bottleneck for memes. Like Ethereum is essentially a bottleneck for memes because the transactions were too slow and the transactions cost too much money. But once you got rid of that barrier, like everyone was going to make memes. Also, like memes can be made because they they can just you can make memes on cut and paste smart contracts. So it's not like it takes a genius to make a project. I don't really know what the hell L3s are. Like where L2 is like not fast enough so you needed an L3. Like what the hell's the deal with that exactly? Is it just another? Is it just another catchy term to sound more technical? Because I can definitely see like them making up like random BS terms to sound more technical and to impress people. Like, oh, we have L threes because L twos weren't good enough for us. I'm like, yeah, whatever, bro. Because like to me, to me, like with the layers, there's the main chain and then there's the stuff to actually scale the main chain. You don't really need anything else. You don't need stuff to scale the stuff that scales the main chain because that's complete. That's uh, that's completely pointless. 
But like Big E32, why don't they just do it on L2? Like L2s were like, weren't L2s built to scale the main chain with cheap transactions? Why the hell do you even need L3? Like, what's the difference? Like, what exactly is the difference? Because, like, that's what, like, that sounds a lot like layer twos to me. Like, that, like, what you're saying is L3 sounds a whole lot like layer two. So, that's why, like, I'm confused and I don't really see a difference between L2 and L3. I still think price BTC going and having is probably going to be between 70 and 80K. I mean, eventually they are going to start saying L4s. Because L3, uh, L3s aren't enough. The L2 gets the fees. It's all about greed. Wait, but what's the point of the L3s? Because L2s were already supposed to scale. So L3s were just an extra layer of scale for like no apparent reason except to collect fees? Like what the hell's the point of that? I guess it is, I guess it's just a money grab. There is no point of that. Like, I, I, yeah, okay, now I understand it. It's just a money grab with no point. That's, that's completely understandable. That's actually really understandable because you kind of expect that. The meme coin projects get the fees. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it's just a greed thing. Like, L3s aren't actually necessary. In other words, they're not real projects. No, Black Sun, that's what L2s were for. Like, L2s were, were, were for uh, gaining speed. L2s are actually, like, look, L2s are faster than the original chain, for sure. L2s are definitely more uh, faster than the original chain. I mean, like, base is actually doing pretty well, despite the uh, meme thing, like, moving over to base. Oh, by the way, WorldCoin, you, know you know the coin that scanned people's eyeballs? That's actually getting pretty popular. Worldcoin's actually getting pretty popular. To the jargon of some, but Worldcoin is actually getting a lot more popular. Um, this is that. So they've actually gotten 10 million users. Worldcoin's actually gotten 10 million users, 70 million transactions, and at least 13 goats brought. I don't really know what the goats thing is about because I haven't really been following. But it looks like a lot of people will, like are willing to scan their eyeballs for some free crypto. Which is uh, actually not all that surprising. So OpenAI CEO Sam Altman's identity coin startup WorldCoin's World App now has more daily users in April than its entire monthly user account to start 2024. So daily users in April are, are more than monthly users account in January, which is not bad growth because that's when they started scanning the eyeballs, I think. WorldCoin's World App has reached 10 million total users, signed up with the average of 2 million users a day and more than 5 million per month. The milestone comes less than a year after the service's launch in June of 2023, according to Diego Sada, the head of product uh, for WorldCoin's parent company, Tools for Humanity, and the project the project now has more daily users than this totally monthly user count in January 2024. WorldCoin is a cryptocurrency project aimed at creating a universal basic income. Users register their identity with a company's World app by having their eyes scanned in person by machines referred to, the, uh, to by the company as Orbs. Remco Blowman, head of blockchain at WorldCoin Foundation, said in a statement that World app wasn't intended to be the only solution on the WorldCoin protocol. So our hope is that this will encourage other contributors to develop additional wallets for the protocol as different users have different needs and preferences for their wallet apps. In other words, down the road, the WorldCoin community has expressed interest in alternatives to World App so that a wider range of people can engage with WorldCoin as they choose. So they're definitely trying to get more people to use this. So one of the more noteworthy use cases for World App as of late has been the viral story of a user on, in Kenya who expressed their gratitude over being able to purchase a goat with the funds they received from WorldCoin airdrop. So they got a WorldCoin airdrop and this guy bought an actual goat with it. Yes, you heard right, people, an actual goat. The crypto community rallied to the person sending an undisclosed amount of cryptocurrency, which they reportedly, which they reportedly used to purchase even more goats. So this guy bought 13 goats 
because of WorldCoin and the popularity it generated. And there is the goat that they bought. So not only that goat, but 13 more goats. So what is the goat's name and what's going to be the next hot, what's going to be the next hot uh, meme coin? It's going to be Sam. That's right. So watch, watch out for Sam the goat or goat Sam or Sam the goat meme coins because that's going to be the next one. People know about this and Sam the goat is going to be the next hot meme coin, my friends. So when asked on X.com why the owner chose to name it that, they responded that I was named after Sam Altman, the co-founder of uh, WorldCoin. Sam the goat, folks, get your goats today. Altman is also the co-founder and current CEO of Unicorn uh, Official Intelligence AI Startup and the former not-for-profit company OpenAI. The company's chat GPT product is currently viewed as state-of-the-art for generative technology. So that's right, my friends. Sam the goat, get your goats today. That's going to be the next hot, uh, uh, that's going to be the next big um, meme coin craze. Where to get it? We need universal high income, according to Elon. I mean, I'm not against UBI. I think a lot of America would actually be against UBI, though. Because UBI, look... UBI has been more of a democratic thing. So, you know, all the, like the entire GOP is going to vote against it. Also, I mean, like, also like people in America are afraid of socialism, right? So like UBI is just not going to fly right now. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's actually made Sam. the. I don't know if anyone's made Sam the goat yet. I don't really know if anyone's made Sam the goat yet, but I'm sure someone will. AGI replaces uh, uh, all jobs is the argument. Well, no, like we're still away. We're still quite a ways away from like um, robots replacing all jobs, but robots are going to definitely replace some. Is that most people without jobs get into bad things? Maybe, but like, you know, if robotics and AI replace enough jobs, they're going to have to get some sort of UBI. Because there's going to be a lot of industries that just be, that grow obsolete. And there's already people complaining about it. But realistically, like inflation hurts the people that are in like the legacy jobs that are actually being replaced because they don't really have any valuable skills to get better jobs. Don't give the ruggers ideas. Dude, it doesn't like it doesn't really matter what I it doesn't matter like what ideas uh, I give them. It really doesn't matter what ideas I give them. Like someone's going to make it sooner or later. Like whenever, like whenever something dumb comes out in crypto, someone makes a stable coin. Wouldn't be a regression. Most people look all, all the countries like are somewhere between socialism and capitalism. Neither one really works at the extreme scale. All jobs, the argument. The fire department and public schools are basically like socialism. Look, none of the, like, I don't know if there's a single economy that works like pure communism or pure capitalism. In their, like, in their ideal states, obviously. The fire department, yeah. But eventually, look, eventually if you get AI to replace a lot of jobs, you're going to have to have some kind of like basic income. Because otherwise, there's going to be like half the population that don't have jobs. You're already seeing some of that now. And it's not only like the low paying jobs that are going to be affected. Like you're talking about jobs like basic accounting, pharmacy, you know, like basic finance, basic like legal jobs. Those are all going to be eliminated. Yeah, but Hong Kong always got special treatment. Without that special treatment, Hong Kong would have never actually been able to develop. It was like it was like even when the British even when like the British claimed it, it was basically the only the only port in China that like had more like uh, that had more of the financial freedom. So a lot of the business of China actually went through it. And that's still that way. It has like a special status. If China was like the United States, Hong Kong wouldn't have any importance. 
UBI would just cause more inflation. We need AI controlling the rate of increase of UBI. I mean, maybe. You might be right about that, but the thing is you have to provide people with some ways to actually make a living if a lot of the jobs just get eliminated and there aren't enough jobs to replace them. UBI would devalue money pretty quickly with the amount of printing needed. Well, the, the thing is, Z, Z, like Z, if you if you have a lot, if you have a situation where a lot of the po large part of the populace is unemployed, they're going to vote in UBI. Public libraries are also kind of. I think people are just fooled by propaganda. I'm sure, like they are. We have a lot of public services. Not everything needs to be privatized, and not everything should be privatized. Did someone just make another Elon coin? I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. It's just another like crap meme coin thing. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, guys, please hit the likes. It's not about babysitting adults. It's just that there's not going to be enough jobs to go around if machines take over everything. Like essentially, you're just you're basically just advocating for like an like a like a really small upper class, and then everyone else being peasants. I just joined it, and uh, do you like actually? Lord? I'm not a huge fan of Worldcoin, but I can't deny it's like momentous growth. So in terms of like being an investment, it might be pretty good. But uh, as for the project itself, no. How how soon do you think meme coins will disperse? Like never, basically. Like it's going to meme coins are going to last throughout this entire bull run. Like, people actually think crypto is some glorious, like, industry where only real projects are going to reign. That's not going to be true at all. Like, that's, that's really not going to be true at all. Yeah, I mean, like, it does look like Sam Altman's cre- It does actually look like Sam Altman's creation. Definitely looks like Sam Altman's creation is getting really popular. Whether that's good or bad is your determination. I really don't care. But like, if, if, in terms of like money growth, that actually might be a really good project. Cause like it obviously like people in the world obviously don't mind don't mind getting their eyeballs scanned to to get a couple of free coins. Oh, 200 percent so far this one. You think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it can actually pump a lot more. I mean, it's definitely you know what it's it's one of those projects that I think kind of like intrigues people. And it can get a lot of people to actually like that it can get a lot of people to to invest without really knowing what's going on. So in short term on the transaction to bear market, meme coins will dump the hardest. Yeah, but the transition to bear market is probably not going to happen in, in the next year or two. And like at least for the next year. And if you short them at the wrong time, you're going to lose like your entire, like you're going to lose all your money. So trying to short meme coins is not going to be a great play. Uh, dubious reasons it can pump or it's weird narrative. You know, the thing is like, I don't think people care. I don't think as many people care about privacy as you think. That's the thing. Thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. If people really cared about privacy, like they wouldn't go for this stuff. Like privacy is a narrative, but I think like most people just don't care. If they can get free money by by getting their eyeball scanned, they'll do it. Especially if it's like a decent amount of money. Like I talk about like I, I'll talk about privacy from time to time, but realistically, I don't really care about KYC AML stuff. I'll go through the KYC AML if it means I can use the service. Because I mean, like to me, I don't have anything to hide anyways. New narrative BTC related tokens. You're on the Zeus network. Liquidity between BTC and Solana. I mean, there. Like, I think bridges to BTC might actually be pretty interesting. Uh, can you look into Suku Coin? Five, five's the run. It's Web three.
And even in the bear run, you could try to you, you could hit something like Pepe and get completely screwed on the short. And like when Pepe goes up, it goes up. When a coin when you hit something like Pepe, it goes like 10 or 100 x That would like destroy all your profits from all your other shorts. I don't really know like if this would get to five dollars. I mean it's it's a small enough market cap in order to do so. About only only about 16% of it's out though. Like so there's still a lot of coins to dump. It's also on I it looks like it's on Ethereum's base layer. Dude, you already have 10,000 validators. That you already have 10,000 validators. Look, all these like all these stable coins that are based on USD are somewhat centralized. Charles is just making excuses because he can't swallow his pride, because he can't swallow his own ego. And it's only for like part of their DeFi, the people that want to use USDC. It's just, it's just, he's just making excuses. Because USDM, like, uh, like USDM has centralization too. It's not just USDC. He's just making dumb excuses. So Suku provides in, uh, intuitive decentralized tools, allowing everyday users and creators to unlock the potential of Web3 House. I've actually looked at this before. It looks like a pretty cool project. I don't really like this orb here in the middle because it blocks part of the screen. But still, like, I think they just they just need to build more. They just need to build more apps on it. Like for Suku, they just need to build more apps on it. You think Render or Worldcoin? Worldcoin, I think is, I, I do think Worldcoin is smaller, so it might have more potential. I mean, Render got a huge, RNDR got a huge boost on the NVIDIA stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, you can hit something like Doge. You can also hit something like Pepe. You short that thing, you're like broke, basically. And the thing is, like, a lot of the... If you're going to short a lot of the... Elk, like, the meme coins... You, you, have to ti you have to time it, like, extremely well. Which I'm, I just wouldn't be... I just be, wouldn't be willing to risk that. I think it's much easier making money off meme coins coming up in the bull run than shorting them when they act, when the in, when the bear run come when the bear market comes. Short you're just you're either like borrowing shares to sell or you're borrowing money to buy. That's what shorts and longs are. So when you short, you're borrowing someone else's shares to sell. When you long, you're borrowing money to buy. Look, world Worldcoin isn't like Worldcoin isn't necessarily RWA. Like Worldcoin's not necessarily RWA at all. Worldcoin is basically this, this weird technology that's it's like scanning your iris for like ID. So it's not really RWA. Which one? Oh, CKB? Nervos? I haven't heard too much news from them uh, recently. I know they were tied to Cardano a while ago, but I'm not really sure if that's still the case. I know they still have like a payment gateway with Cardano, but I don't think that's going anywhere. It's not pumping, man. It's like, it actually dumped 13% today. Uh, it's pumped quite a bit recently, but it's actually dumped today. Uh, in price in 24 hours. I haven't seen, I haven't really seen Nervos Network News.
Nervos Network saw a 16% price surge in the past 24 hours, and now the token is trading at a little above three cents. Another, I don't really see why, um, I don't know, I really haven't seen too much news. Like, all the news just reports, like, the, the price changes for Nervos, but it hasn't, like, told me why it's actually pumped up. Build universal decentralized applications, experiences protocol. Yeah, I haven't really seen any real news from Nervos. Been getting it's been getting a lot of press outside of that. Just a multiplier, so you put in ten dollars to borrow a hundred. Basically, yeah. I mean, look, generally, like when you short or long, it is leveraged. Your opinion on uh, Maze? I, I don't. I've never heard of the. I've never actually heard of the coin. It's a. It's a small. I mean, it's a small project. About half of the supply is out, which is better than most new projects. I actually don't know who's going to run all the. I mean, I think the. I think when AG when the three um, AI coins merge, I think the AGIX guy is going to be the CEO. Uh, at least that's what I heard. So I heard, anyways, the AGI, AGIX guy is going to be the CEO. The others are going to be like people on the board. Is a blockchain initiative emphasizing community involvement over a reliance on private investors or venture capital built with open source components and aims for transparency and collective development. In our tests, it achieved notable technical milestones, such as a transaction speed of 40,000 TPS in a, in a one second block finality, demonstrating its capability for handling high transaction volumes Efficiently, Maze plans to enhance user privacy through the integration of ZK Starks, allowing for secure transaction verification without exposing looks uh, sensitive data. The project exemplifies a professional community-driven approach to blockchain development, prioritizing performance, privacy, and open source collaboration without making grand ways claims about revolutionizing the world. So it's not going to revolutionize the world. It looks like it's going to get, it can get 40 TPS and one second block finality. It's going, to inter it's going to integrate ZK Starks. It also looks like it's, uh, it looks like it's an Ethereum layer too. It looks like it's, it, it does sort of look like it's an layer, uh, Ethereum layer too. Uh, no, it took me a while to figure out why people use leverage shorts longs. Just bet on the market going. Yeah, look, longs are that yeah, longs are basically extended bets on the market going up. Shorts are extended bets on the market going down. I look like I said. I've always been against leverage in crypto altogether. I don't think leverage is necessary at all in crypto. The market is uh, the market is obvious to me is uh, volatile enough where you don't really need it. Thoughts on Amazon and Jeff Bezos? What do, what do Amazon and Jeff Bezos have to do with anything? They're DCAing. It could work out, but I doubt it. Wait, DCA into like, DCA into shorts and longs? No, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you could DCA into like an all for like five to 10 years. I just think it's too long. Well, Mateo, not everyone in crypto actually believes in the future of Bitcoin. A lot of people are just in here to make money. If you're in here just to make, if you're just in here to make money, then shorting Bitcoin when you think it's going to go down is perfectly reasonable. Not everyone believes in the new world order or the new financial system or whatever. But like, some people are just in it to make money. 
I personally think Bitcoin has a really good future. Well, I don't know past 10 or 15 years because like the Bitcoin mining structure is kind of like messed up after that. Uh, uh, after that, because I think like mining is going to start to cost too much. But until then, Bitcoin should be fine. I think cryptocurrency is here, definitely here to stay. But not everyone believes that. They just see an opportunistic market for them to make money. I think RNDR is still pretty good. Like Nier does stuff in the AI market too, and I think they're going to be pretty good. Um, you could make like an argument for like GRT or something else. The digital currency system, when they get rid of it, the, they're not going to get, look, the dollar's not going away anytime soon. You know, do you realize how many years like there have been people saying the dollar's going away and it hasn't happened? Every time it's like a new thing. Uh, look, crypto's not going to replace the dollar. It, it'll be it'll be its own it'll be its own market and it'll keep growing, but it's not replacing the dollar. I'm just long term DC over time is the best strategy. There's no quick wins in crypto unless you get really lucky. I mean, I, I think like it doesn't take as much luck as people think, but it does take luck. Yes. The dollar's the dollar's been the mainstay of currency for like a hundred years. No, it's not a scam. Yeah, eventually everything falls apart because nothing lasts forever. Do you like SPTC? Um, I'm actually not a huge fan of BRC twenty altogether. BRC twenty, like I, I don't think Bitcoin was actually made to build on. I think Bitcoin was basically there to handle like uh, I think Bitcoin was literally there to uh, like like to be a store of value. Like BRC, I think BRC right now is really poorly thought out of because like you need massive scaling solutions for Bitcoin that aren't that like are more than just lightning for BRC to even work. I think like, look, I personally think like when you get like when you get a lot of transactions, BRC is just going to crumble. Like, ER, like ERC is already inefficient enough. BRC is even less efficient. No, I'm not from Canada. How's Pundi X going to do? Pundi X to me is like an old coin. I know they've kindly, uh, I recently have had like a little bit of a revival, but I still don't think I believe in Pundi X. Yeah, I don't really believe in I I have I do not believe in like BRC or ER. I don't really believe in BRC. I've never believed in Bitcoin. I've never believed in like building an ecosystem on Bitcoin. Cuz Bitcoin out of all the blockchains is one of the like it's pretty much the most unscalable blockchain out there. Like they have Lightning which f works fine for like simple transactions, but when you get into more complex transactions, Lightning can't handle them. And I haven't really seen I really really haven't seen uh, anything that can. VET has been doing pretty well the last couple of days, but it needs to get over five cents solidly and head on up. I guess we all have our, I'm enjoying billions of Bitcoin shorts getting liquidated. I made money with Bitcoin pump pun DX, big pump and dump. I mean, I technically have a ton of pun D I still have some of the old pun DX on, uh, on Atomic. I don't really know what the hell to do with it though. Peter Schiff says the whole industry is pump and dump. I mean, there's lots of swings in crypto. I'll give you that. But crypto is here to stay. Like, he's not getting rid of crypto. And Bitcoin's going to stay for like the next 10, 15 years. You're also not getting rid of Bitcoin. I think Peter Schiff is just, I, I think Peter Schiff is just salty that Bitcoin performs better than gold. Because gold is actually a store of value. It's not something that you actually use to increase your wealth. aped into it and research caught uh, out as fast as I could. Huh. Dude, you know, like, you know, like when a lot of influencers are pumping, like, are, are really trying to like, when people come in here and try to shill like a certain like meme coin, you know, that meme coin's about to like rug pull. Like when a bunch of people at the same time come in here and try to shill a certain coin, that's that coin's about to rug pull. 
Because like we've seen a we've we've actually seen it with several meme coins, um, recently. I forgot what the last one was called, but recently there have been several meme coins that are like that. Because they're desperate to get like at that point they're just desperate to get exit liquidity. Yeah, the Jesus coin was was one of them. They actually try to link it with the actual Jesus, which is a disgrace, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, Jesus would never endorse that, most uh, most obviously. Yeah, I mean, like that that whole thing was that whole thing was just weird, man. That whole thing was like just really, really weird. Yeah, guys, please hit the likes, man. Yeah, there was like, there's, there's obviously been a lot of meme coin chill. There's, there's obviously been a lot of meme coin chills in here lately, because like meme coins are really hot. They need to like, they need someone to be exit liquidity. It does not surprise me if um. Really does not surprise me if OJ Simpson died today. Dude's probably been in prison for a long time. Oh, I mean, not prison. Like, dude probably hasn't been taking care of himself. Oh, by the way, SBF did actually file an appeal today. Oh, yeah, elephant money. Like, people tried to shill that for quite a while. Obviously, like they were like, oh, they, they were like, oh man, it's like magic with our MIT professor BS. It's gonna go up forever because whatever. Obviously, like that was obviously that was a scam. Most obviously, that was a scam. With a total supply of like one quintillion elephants or whatever the hell that is. Do you uh, like the movie Matrix when it came out? That was a long time ago. Yeah, Matrix. The first one was the first movie was pretty good. But SBF actually SBF actually filed for appeal today. So Sam Bateman Freed files to appeal conviction and sentence. The notice of appeal was filed electronically on April 11th, nearly two weeks after former FTX CEO was sentenced to 25, 25 years in prison. Lawyers representing SBF have filed the paperwork to appeal the conviction and sentence of former FTX CEO. In an April 11th notice filed in the U.S. Court for the Southern District of New York, attorney Alexandro Shapiro said Bateman Freed intended to appeal his conviction on, on seven felony accounts by a jury and a judge and Judge Lewis Kaplan sentence of 25 years in federal prison. SBF lawyers said they plan to appeal on March 28th sentencing hearing, so the filing was uh, expected. Um, the filing came two weeks after Bangman Freed's sentencing hearing at which the judge at which Judge Kaplan also ordered the forfeiture of 11 billion dollars. So he's going to appeal, and he's going to lose the appeal most likely. So he's going to, he's still going to jail. I think there's going to be a lot of theories saying like this appeal is going to succeed, but I don't really think there's any chance that the appeal will actually succeed. Also, all the conspiracy theories about Sam Bateman Freed not being arrested, Sam Bateman Freed not going to prison, Sam Bateman Freed walking scot free because of his political connections, those have been all proven false. All of those have actually been proven false, my friends. So he is not getting off scot-free. Orange with knife. Dude, I, there's going to be there's going to be so many meme coins coming out soon with the goat thing, maybe with the OJ Simpson thing and like with other stuff. There's going to be like there's going to be like so many memes. There's definitely going to be so many memes that come out of this. Pretty crazy. So there's going to be like, there's definitely going to be a couple of memes. Um, there's definitely going to be the, a couple of memes that explode out of all this stuff.
They don't even call them influencers. Now it's key influencer leaders is how they refer to them on their early allocations from tokens. Dude, they're just paying them to shill their coins, man. Especially smaller projects. They're definitely just paying them to shill their coins on smaller projects. That's all it is. And they also like they also give them fancy titles to make themselves feel good. Because everyone likes to be like a thought leader or a key influencer or whatever the hell they call them. You know, the thing is, like, if you pay me like a million dollars, you can call me whatever the hell you want. It doesn't even matter what title you give me. You could call me like you could call me the primary shiller and I'd be fine with that. You can call me like the, the big coin shill guy and I would be perfectly fine with that. As long as you give me a million dollars. Uh, to, for advertising fees. I could care less. You don't have to give me a fancy title. You can, you can say it, you can tell it like it is and I'd be perfectly fine. Meme coins are like Pokemon, better get them all to 100% the game. Oh uh, yeah, they kind of are. I, I, won't, I won't deny that. Bitcoin booty bandit. I'd be fine with that. If you, if you give me a million dollars, you can call me that. I don't care. Yeah, I changed my name a little while ago just for branding purposes. And because like, you know, if people ask, if people are asking you like who you're listening to, like crypto anglers, much easier to find on the search uh, than like, you know, crypto news, because you can't, you can't actually find me if you search for crypto news or exit liquidity for the project's developers. Yes. I mean, especially if you hold it for a long time, but like a couple of memes that like a couple of memes have lasted a long time. Look at dog with hat. It's like lasted for several months. Dogecoin's been in there for like, you know, years and years. Dog, like a uh, Floki's been there for a couple of years as well. So yeah, there is, a, a, there is a lot of it that you're just acting as exit liquidity. There is a lot of it where you're acting as exit liquidity, but you know, there is also a lot of money to be made as well. Uh, can they throw SBS parents in jail too? No, I don't think they're going after his parents, which I think is a shame because I think his parents were just as big as part of uh, of the scam as SBF himself. So no, I don't think they're. I think that I don't think they're going after the parents. They're oh, they're content with just throwing SBF in jail. Yeah, like look, I I don't actually I don't know if memes are that different from a lot of crypto. I mean, yeah, there's probably just like a higher percentage. There is a higher percentage of rug pulls in memes for sure. But like, it's not like the percentage of pull, like rug pulls in other areas of crypto is that small. Think uh, AI coin, ASI? Yeah, I think $5 is definitely a possibility. It's going to debut at like $2.76. So $5 is definitely a possibility. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be surprised if it went to like $20 uh, in the bull run. Because it's like a big AI coin. AI is hot. So if, it, if, if like an AI coin got up to like $100 billion in market cap, I honestly wouldn't be that surprised. Like, like, like it might not be this coin that we're all talking about. It might be another coin. But AI is going to be one of the major narratives. So like if an AI coin, if an AI coin legit got up to like $100 million or $100 billion, like I don't think anyone would really be surprised. You know, because like, you know, especially if that project like aligns themselves with like NVIDIA or something. I think Pepe will do okay. I don't even hold any, but memes are just more honest in that they have no utility. I mean, yeah, I, I, but like a lot of like for the larger memes, maybe, but like for a lot of the smaller memes, they don't even get to a million dollars before they rug pull. Just saw an article that said Iran to attack Israel by tonight. We'll see. We'll see. You know, Israel could like, if they actually went to war, Israel could just flatten Iran. Like Israel's military is much stronger than Iran's. So the AI coin coming is a fetch ocean and uh, it's fetch, fetch ocean and AGIX. That's what the coin coming is. It's fetch ocean AGIX. And it's going to, it's going to debut at like seven point something billion dollar market cap. It's, it's a pretty big deal. It's ba they're basically making a giant GPU farm is what they're doing. Like, they have a bunch of fancy terms for it, but realistically, it's just a really big GPU farm, which I, I have nothing against because a really big GPU farm has a lot of computing power, and that is very attractive to a people that work in AI. So I actually have no problem with their plan. I think their plan is actually not bad at all. No such thing as an AI coin. I mean, like, 
you know what what AGIX was making like an AI marketplace using AGIX as the primary means of buying stuff. I could get you know I I, I could I can see that. I don't know if I would call it an AI coin exactly, but I could definitely see that working. Only one co AI coin. Now that's not the only one. R and DR is also one. And Nier is not purely AI either. I think a lot of people just t tack on some AI projects to their protocol or tack on like AI to part of their project and say that they're AI. It's like AI blockchain. I don't think like any of the AI blockchains are actually self-learning. I think they just like, I personally think they just add AI to the name and that makes like uh, that makes their attractiveness go up. I've never heard of Ether though. Like crypto partners, crypto companies make partnerships all the time, but I've never heard of the second one. Because like once there's like a, you know, like once there is a big like narrative in crypto, everyone tries to pile on. Like literally, everyone tries to pile on once there's like a huge narrative in crypto. So like a lot of coins are going to proclaim themselves AI or RWA just to climb on the bandwagon because bandwagoning makes money and like crypto projects are, 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 are like ever hungry for money will be expensive with the speed. Yeah, but I think they can like I think they can uh, lend or loan the GPU um, resources out and they can make more money by loaning the GPU resources out. So it's not a bad idea because like. I, I think there's a lot of companies that are hungry for GPU. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are actually hungry for like GPU um, processing power right now. Definitely a bunch of, there's definitely a bunch of uh, companies that are really, really hungry for GPU processing power. So it's, it's actually not, it's definitely not a bad, and it's not a bad thing to go into. Uh, but coins are essentially worthless. It depends. If they're actually using the coins to trade in the marketplace, I think that's actually okay. When the, the market decides that. The F Grelf, the first meme on Hedera, Trev Ben is kind of nice. I actually have some Grelf because someone gave me some Grelf. I think Milton Bates gave me some Grelf. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. Like, well, the, the, the Hedera ecosystem is really small right now. I think it's problematic that it's still permissioned at this point. It's probably not going to be unpermissioned until like maybe a year or two from now. Um, it, I think like the growth of the ecosystem, I think the growth of Hedera might be kind of limited. I, I definitely think the ecosystem limits, uh, uh, the ecosystem like determines if like the growth of something is like limited. So, you know, Hedera does need to hurry up and become non permit, like become permissionless. That would definitely help HBAR. I think HBAR's, I think HBAR's potential is huge, but I don't know if they're really going about it in a right way. Like, yeah, like, you know, Dave Hooper's always talking about like how much TPS they can actually reach. But I don't think that's really good. I really don't think that's going to matter too much. I'm going to start mining memes on here. I just copy all the popular ones on it. Yeah, but I mean, like, Soul and Ethereum have the liquidity. Hedera doesn't have the liquidity. And it's not like Hedera's ecosystem isn't very popular. Like, they have to get some people, they have to get people to come over on their ecosystem. Like, I do think you have to wait for it to be permissionless, though. I definitely think like you have to wait for it to like it needs to be permissionless. And they somehow have to attract liquidity, which I'm not really sure how they're going to do what they're going to do to attract liquidity. Because they're obviously not interested in doing the same promotional stuff that Solana is interested in doing. And I, like them just trying to bank on industrial utility, I don't think it's going to work. What kind of partnership do they actually have with NVIDIA? Is Uniswap a good buy right now that's down like 33% for the month? 
Uniswap is down because the SEC sued them. I think after Uniswap stops dumping, I definitely think it's a good opportunity. But I don't know exactly when they're going to stop dumping because they just got a Wells notice yesterday. Base Network is thriving and taking number one meme. Yeah, that's because Solana's bogged down, man. It's going to be bogged down until the 15th. So we got like we got until basically like next Monday before Solana gets fixed. The coins will be there, complete with logo and the same circulating supply. I mean, that's fine, but you still don't have people buying them. You need people to come into the Hedera ecosystem. You definitely need people to come into the Hedera ecosystem. I think the thing that's confusing some people with base is that base doesn't actually have a coin itself. So I, I think that's actually what, what, uh, what's confusing some people about base because they're looking to invest in base and they can't actually invest in base. I mean, I, I only have Brett. I mean, I haven't really, I don't have any Tachi Machi or anything. So the only, the only meme I have on base is Brett. I have like lots of memes on Solana because people keep giving me memes on Solana. And I think eventually one of them will actually be worth something. It's future moving. It can't cost me. It, yeah, it, it probably doesn't cost you much to mint at all. I, I can't imagine that it would actually cost you that much to mint. Guys, there's a theory of meme. I think this is actually an airdrop. Like, I think this is like an airdrop coin from Book of Meme. What about XRP? There's like nothing about XRP. If you have a big bag of XRP, you should sell it and buy something else. Went to Costco yesterday. Costco is a great place, man. Not only for their food. Their food's great, but like they have like good stuff there. Drop a grand to mint the memes, release 99% and hold the rest. Probably not a bad idea because people won't suspect you for holding 1% of the supply, but even holding 1% of the supply, it's still like a huge amount of money once you actually sell it. And that's true. Like, you know, for the people that are really greedy with memes, you only really need to keep one or 2% of the supply for yourself. You don't actually need to keep a huge amount of the supply. I joined NVIDIA's inception program. That's kind of like a, I mean, that isn't that kind of like an incubator uh, inception programs are like, I'm going to, I'm going to guess they're like incubators. Uh, not on base. We're here for the long term. I mean, if you're talking about a meme coin, I'm not really sure like if I'm gonna talk about like meme coins for the long term. Maybe for the bull run, but not afterwards. Raise 90, yeah. Cause like most of the meme coins don't really do anything, but as long as the founder doesn't immediately dump on the memes, I feel like some of them have a good chance of growth if they get promoted enough. I also don't think it costs that much to mint the memes. You can like literally mint them. I think you can like mint them on most blockchains for like a couple of bucks. How likely is a meme coin I create on Solana to go big? I was thinking about making my own meme coin, but notice costs are a lot, uh, costs a lot of soul to create. I don't know. I've never actually tried creating a coin. I can't imagine it would cost that much though. I really can't imagine. ESP, do you think Floki can actually 10x from where it is right now? That's kind of what I that's kind of my goal for Floki, like 10 or 12x from where it is right now. I think towards the top of the bull run, Floki can actually get 10 or 10 or 12x from where it is right now. How much soul was it gonna cost you? I think it's possible. I mean, like that's kind of the goal I have for Jasmine too, from its current price. You need at least like 30 soul with a liquidity in total for a meme coin. Oh, so you're, you actually need to provide the liquidity. Man, 30 soul is actually a lot of money. It's like, uh, what, like $5,000? That, that's actually a pretty big cost. Although if you get a meme coin to be popular, you can make a lot more than 30 soul, I guess. Two or, so, two or three Solana to create. I mean, if it's only two to three, I can see a lot of people creating them and provide liquidity is a whole nother story. Yeah, providing the liquidity could be really troublesome because that, that would actually take a lot of money. That would actually take a lot of money to provide liquidity. 
for sure. 20 soul for liquidity and 10 for the rest. I see. Because, like, if Floki gets that, I can cash out for 60 grand on Floki. And that's more, like, that's going to be more than enough to satisfy me on Floki Inu. Making the meme coin uh, is the easiest part. Creating a com uh, capable of knowledge and trustworthy team and community. Um, yeah, ESP, most meme coins don't have that. Like, I think most meme coins, the goal of the creator is to get it to, like, $10 million market cap and then rug pull. I, I think that's the I think that's the goal of most meme coins. Serious. Cause like they are quite literally made to rug pull for the most part. And like I think like for meme coins to go big, it is partially based on luck. There's obviously like the connections and stuff, but I think for the meme coins, it is partially based on luck, whether it goes big or not. Uh, it will flop without hype. Someone has to create the hype. Yeah, you're right about that. But I mean, I feel like if you have like a really nice logo, and you just spread it around on social media, there's a good, there's a decent chance that someone picks it up. All you really, like, because all you really need is that one big investor. Once you have that one big investor, I think you're good for the most part. Give, uh, give real crypto? Yeah, real crypto, sure. I actually don't think it gives real crypto a bad name. Because, like, I think you're thinking that crypto already had a good name before me, uh, before uh, memes. Crypto didn't have a good name before memes. And like I said, memes are what the crypto market was memes are, are what the crypto market was made for. Stuff like this, stuff like this is literally what like a market like crypto is kind of made for. Hit the cultural zay. It's true. You either have to hit that or you have to like you either have to hit that or you have to have like a really good promotion. Look, look at book of meme. Or like a really big pump and dump team. Look at book of meme. That there's like no cultural thing there. That's not even a catchy name. Yeah, but you joined a market, but 88 Metal Mania, you joined a market that's tailor-made for this stuff. I don't see how you don't recognize that right now. You literally joined a market that doesn't want regulation and has no and has very few barriers to entry. I mean, what the hell did you think you joined? Yeah, I would have actually never guessed that book of meme would pump, because like it because it, it like it's just it's not that catchy. I think people are I think a lot of people are just still looking at the crypto market and still not realizing what they joined. Well, for my long-term investments, no, I don't want anon projects. For memes, I honestly don't care if they're anon or not. I'm almost guessing that the, the team behind Book of Meme is, uh, is, uh, is, I mean, everyone already knew, like everyone already referred to crypto as kind of a casino. Memes are just exactly that. There's always going to be some like, I guess like long, there's always going to be long-term projects and real projects there, but you're not going to be able to stop memes and crypto. Like, unless you actually want to give the SEC full power and like governments the full power to control the market, you're not going to be able to kill meme coins. You either have a choice of a completely government, you, you have the choice of either a completely government controlled market or you have the choice of, hey, we're going to have a lot of meme coins and there's going to be a lot of rug pulls. And people in crypto would rather have the second one. No, it's like, big E32, it's always been like that. 
There's like massive pumps during the bull market and massive dumps during the bear market. There's coins that come up, meme or not. Like, I think people are still, like, I, I think people are still kind of under the illusion that crypto wants, to, like, crypto is going to be, like, kind of, like, crypto is going to be, like, a professional market like the stock market. Whereas a market like crypto was never really meant to be like that. It's come some way where there's better projects, but it's never look. It's never really going to be like this. It's not going to be completely like the stock market, because first of all, you don't own any part of the company when you, you don't own a part of the company when you buy the coin. Like the organization of the company actually has like no loyalty to you. You don't get a vote in the matter. It's never going to be it's never going to be as tightly regulated as the actual stock market because a it's a global market a it's a global market b like there's no barriers to entry and it's permissionless and anyone can create a blockchain yeah you do get a vote with their governance yeah you do you might get a vote with their governance tokens but that doesn't actually affect the company it might affect the 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 blockchain but it doesn't actually affect the company Like, you don't actually own shares in the company. And the company doesn't have to be attached to the coin. Yeah, you're acting like you have one too by saying, like, the, the market's going to be 100% regulated. Dude, I use the protocols to swap all the time. It's not going to change my perspective because reality is what it is, Big E32. Yeah, but see, like, ICOs were a lot, like, ICOs, especially in the stock market, were a lot more controlled. And also, you have these things called DEXs. You never had that in, like, stock marketing. Dude, swaps aren't hard to do. Like, swaps and cross-chain bridges aren't hard to do. Like, some of the interfaces are kind of confusing. But swaps really aren't that hard to do. Dude, Sam is stuck with 25 years. He's not going to win his appeal. Like, swaps, like, consolidating for yield farming and stuff like that, that's not that hard to do. Yeah, that's because like we, I had a couple, I had a couple of liquidity problems. With uh, I, I mean like the AWT swap took me a long time just because there was a huge slippage issue because there wasn't enough liquidity. But there's nothing I can do about that. I wonder if people actually feel bad for it. No one, I don't think anyone really feels bad for SBF. Because like we all know what he did to the market and how much he cost the market. So I don't think anyone really feels bad. Arbitrum is a bit of pain to use, though cheap but annoying to convert. Now, some of the cross-chain stuff, like some of the cross-chain stuff, it takes a while because of liquidity issues or like other swappage issues. You just have to work with it for a few minutes. And half the, half the problems I had were, were with Atomic because Atomic sucks. Arbitrum is a bit of pain. Like the Ethereum bridging is still like crap. 
It still doesn't work like half the time, especially like with Atomic, because Atomic doesn't automatically convert fees. So you actually have to have Ethereum to move L2 tokens. They just can't convert the Ethereum tokens by themselves. The, the problem with a lot of those, like the problem with a lot of those wallets is you have to hold some Ethereum in the wallets. You can't just auto convert. I don't like, that's not a feature in a lot of them. Also, Ethereum is expensive. So to move Ethereum to the location you need to use it, that also is going to suck as well. We'll send him some commissionary at least. Carolyn's going to be in jail probably for like a year or two as well. She got a, she's obviously getting a reduced sentence. The Uniswap. How far down the chain do you think this Uniswap lawsuit will go? I personally don't think the SEC is going to win. Like, they haven't really been doing that well in all the lawsuits. Especially because, like, Coinbase won that class action. Because I, I don't really see a way how Coinbase wins that class action and then the judge actually rules in favor of the SEC on the SEC case. That doesn't really make too much sense to me. Because if, if the Second Circuit already determined that they're not securities, I don't know how they can flip it around and determine that they're securities again afterwards. That doesn't make all that much sense to me. You know, when they all sentence he and the mystery guy, what other mystery guy? Gary, Gary Wang is probably going to end up with the same sentence as Carolyn Ellison. And the, uh, the, the CT and the CTO guy is probably going to get a slightly longer sentence, but they all ratted out on, they all ratted out Sam Bankman Freed, which means like overall they're, it's not, they're not going to be do uh, they, they can't do too bad. Yeah. They can't stop Uniswap even if the SEC wins, because if it's like, because they can take they can take down the front end, but they can't stop people from accessing the actual engine. That's also another reason why the market's never going to be full. Uh, that's also a reason why the market's never going to be fully automated or fully regulated because there are these like decentralized exchanges, and people like if you force people, they will go through like they will go through VPNs to access them. And the U.S. isn't going to ban VPNs. I don't think they're going to get three or five. I think they're going to get one or two years. They they probably got a sweetheart deal to rat out Sam Bingman Freed. CB. So CB is going to add features for Pepe. CB is going to add features for Pepe. Dude, after it, look, I, I have a feeling that if, uh, if Coinbase actually wins their case against the SEC, you're going to see a lot more listings, especially from like the meme coin era, the meme coin market. And like if 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 these exchanges start listing these meme coins, their popularity is only going to rise. Like and Coinbase isn't shy about it. They've already listed several meme coins trying to sue a piece of software. The SEC is basically trying everything they can and it's not working. Whether you call it a piece of software or whatever, like the SEC is literally trying to sue everything they can. It's not working. Congress had a crypto bill uh, to attempt that 200K fine for using VPN. Not like the US is never going to ban VPNs. There's gonna, there'd be so much resistance against that. Also, like the S, look, get, like the SEC can't even win against Coinbase. How the hell are they going to win against Uniswap? Exactly, like they can actually moderate and regulate Coinbase. They can't do the same with Uniswap. So I'm not exactly sure, like what the. I mean, I don't think there is logic there. I think Gary Gensler's just getting desperate and trying to like and trying every available path, which is not a good idea, because he's not going to succeed in any of them. Will Ben Cowan ever stop trying to fud the market with his post having dump theory? There might be a post having dip, but it's not going to be that big. I mean, the cost for mining is like up to 80k now. I'm sure they'll try to find Uniswap, but they might not get that much out of it. In fact, I don't think they'll get much out of it at all. I, I want to see how much they can get out of the Coinbase stuff. 
I really want to see how much they can get out of the Coinbase stuff. And make them geofence. CB, like, as long as they have enough volume, I don't think CB will actually delist. And like I said, all that, like, if they win the lawsuit against the SEC, you'll see them list a lot more. Yeah, Cowan's need a new, Cowan needed a new narrative because his old narrative didn't really work. And it's not only Coinbase, like Binance always, Binance lists a lot of memes and so does like all the other big exchanges. The, the exchanges want the fees, so as long as they can stay out of trouble with the SEC, they're going to list the memes as, 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 as they get big. Because the memes generate a lot of volume. Even if there's a post having dump, it's not going to be a huge one. Like people that are hoping for like a 40% dump post having, that's not going to happen. Like they've already attempted like massive dumps before. Like none of them have reached anywhere close to 40%. There's just too much demand, right? There's too much demand right now for them to reach like that kind of number. Like who, like who's going to sell exactly? Like minor reserves are already pretty low as they are. They're not going to dump their entire reserve. Would the back end still be geofensible? I, I don't think, I mean, you can try to geofence, but people are just going to use VPNs. It's early. I, I think like if I actually look at like, you know, just bit, uh, if I just look at Bitcoin trends, if I just look at Google trends for Bitcoin, Like the, the 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 Bitcoin trend Bitcoin searches have been trending down. Um, Bitcoin trends have definitely like the, it's been trending down for the last couple of weeks in terms of big uh, interest in Bitcoin. It's probably gonna go. I think it's gonna trend back up after the halving, but right now like it's actually down. I think because Bitcoin hasn't really pumped in a while, so it's down. Yeah, if you look at Bitcoin trends over time, like. Week by week, it's actually down since the since mid March. So, like, getting less views isn't just a result of uh, changing the channel name. Is basically it's it's also a result of just the overall trend being down for the last like two three weeks, which sucks, but whatever. All right, guys, that's going to be it for right now. Like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications button. I will be back uh, tomorrow and I'll be back later tonight and I will see you guys later.